Okay, so today I'm going to be talking to you about um, Visual Studio Code, otherwise known as VS Code. Uh, VS Code is a source code editor. It includes support for debugging, syntax highlighting, intelligent code completion, um, code refactoring, and some more stuff. So what you'll want to do first is just search up VS Code download. You'll go to the download area on their website. See it offers downloads for Windows, Linux, Mac. I have a Mac, so I'm going to use the Mac download. There it begins downloading your VS Code zip file. Wait for that to download. You want to open that up. Okay. So you'll see here in the finder, um, you'll see VS Code zip. You want to double click on that. Open up the zip file. And then you should have your Visual Studio Code app downloaded. Uh, I've downloaded it a few times now. So you just click on any of these, it should open it up for you. All right, now once you're inside um, the VS Code application, you'll see you have uh, an area for uh, opening folders with code in it, um, searching, run and debug tools, um, you know, different different things here. But the main thing we want to show you today is the extensions ability in VS Code. So the extensions allow you to um, they allow you to run a, a number of languages like Python, Java, C plus, um, all of that stuff. So we see here, if I click on extensions, um, extensions I have installed are, you know, Jupyter, um, Python, some SQL, um, database language and stuff like that. But what we want to show you is the extension for um, Scala Metals, because that's something we'll be talking a lot about in class. So if we Google Scala Metals and look at some of their documentation, um, it'll show you, let's see where it is in the documents, that Visual Studio Code is actually the most complete editor um, that has the Metals extension. So you see that it, it checks off just about every box. Um, so it's very useful for editing with uh, the Scala. Uh, the Scala language. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to put um, Scala onto your VS Code notebook. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come here to extensions. In the extensions, we will search up Scala, excuse me, Scala Metals. Okay, and I would say this one right here is actually going to install install the Scala language server, and it's going to go ahead and install the syntax with it. So if you just click on this one, click your install button, then you'll see it just automatically installs both the language and the syntax. And from there, you will have this metals tab where you can go into metals. All right, guys. Um, now that we've got the proper um, VS Code extensions installed for Scala. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to. Um, you know, get a basically a simple project going and then also how to work with um, scalation as well. So let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to need to do here is I'm going to minimize this. I'm just going to create um, a random folder. I'm just going to call it temp. And that's going to hold uh, basically all the files that we need for this project. So I'm just create this basic folder. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in VS Code, open it up. So we're in the temp folder. Um, and now you'll notice that we have this, or for a lot of you guys, will probably be a new um, icon on the left-hand side of uh, your dashboard here. Um, and we can click on it, and then it says, okay, let's start a new Scala project. And um, so let's go ahead and do that. So you can see we're starting the server here, the metal server, um, which basically, I mean, it's just gonna take a second, but basically what this is gonna do is allow us to, in real time, as we have a project and we save things, it's going to, uh, recompile uh, and allow us to uh, it'll recompile on the fly basically and then we can run that code uh, as soon as we've saved and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Um, okay so now it started the server for us and now we need to select a uh, file to or basically a template to work with and as you can see there's a lot of different options here so this is a really basic hello world program this is a little bit a little bit less basic so we're going to grab this one but this is basically uh, going to go out and grab this um, from, from a repo on the internet, and it's going to um, go ahead and import that, that project or that all those packages for this project for us. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And I went ahead and made a temp folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, let it let all of these files be dropped into that temp folder. And I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm just going to call 
Um, actually, it, it might create a subdirectory in the temp. So I'll just call this temp. Um, I forget how it actually does that, but we'll see here in a second. So we're going to call it temp. Um, and then it's going to run the getter and it's going to go out and it's going to grab that file. And then it's going to ask us if we want to open a new window. I'm going to say no because I don't really have anything else open. And it's going to open it for us right here. And you can see that we got a basic project and then it's going to go ahead and start building it. It's going to call it SBT, which um, was another option of something we could have used, but it's going to call that to kind of build everything out, and build out our project. And you're going to see the files change as it starts building out the files. Um, and we're going to, so this is another thing, we're going to import the build, which is actually going to, so it loaded SBT and then we're going to actually build everything. It's going to ask us if we want to build it and we're going to say yes. And now it's actually building it for us. And it's adding in the target folder and some other things. <clears throat> I'll wait for that to finish here. Okay, so it looks like that finished up. Um, so now we have a template downloaded, uh, the server's running, everything's built, and all the thing we have to do is type in run and see if it actually runs our template. And there we go, success. So hello world, I was compiled by Scala 3. Very nice. And just to double check, we go into the source, into the main, and look at our actual Scala file. And we can see here that um, it was, in fact, you know, supposed to print hello world and also I was compiled by Scala 3. So it was doing what it's supposed to do and it ran successfully. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna show, you know, basically how to update this and kind of the, some of the benefits of actually using, you know, an IDE or at least Visual Studios versus some of the others. And really one of the best things is, you know, the autocomplete, the extensions you can add in that um, will allow you to have your Scala code kind of finished for you. I mean, I think you know, it makes things way faster, especially if you aren't super comfortable with language uh, anyway. But for example, like we'll just create another um, message here. So we'll call it message two. Say that, okay, uh, actually we'll make this just uh, some numerical operation. So we'll say three plus three. Um, okay, so save it. And notice every time I save, the server recompiles. So we'll go ahead and we'll say print ln message two, um, but the interesting thing here is if I do it again, it's gonna say, do I want this message too? And it's gonna tell me it's an integer and I'm gonna say, yeah. So basically what I'm trying to get out here is that you know, if you had a big long file and you were trying to find variables or you needed a specific phrase you couldn't remember, this just really speeds up um, your coding. So even if you don't wanna actually run the code in the terminal here, you can at least write your Scala programs in this editor to make things you know, a little easier on yourself. Um, so anyway, just to test everything, I'm going to save and it's going to recompile. Um, so I should get hello world. I was compiled by Scala 3 and then 6. So let's see if that's the case. All right, so hello world. I was compiled by Scala 3 and 6. Great. So now we know how to um, basically set up a simple project or simple template to get us going, um, how to do some basic modifications, and see some of the benefits of using uh, VS Code. And now, um, I just want to touch on a couple quick things and then I'll hop into scalation. Um, but anyway, so right here, for example, um, I talked about a server earlier. So if something happens with your server, you can restart it, um, you can reconnect to it. If something happens to your actual connection, um, you can start a new Scala project, you can import build, but all these are kind of prefab commands that you can use. Um, if you have multiple projects open, you can kind of go through um, your directories up here, see what libraries you're actually using. Um, so some, some pretty handy stuff, um, especially as you start getting into larger and larger projects. Um, the final thing here I want to show before I hop into scalation is I want to open the command palette. And Metals has this thing called a run doctor to kind of diagnose problems uh, that you may have with the IDE. So for example, um, we have root, root test, and um, our temp build. Uh, and so we can see we're using Scala 3.1, and then it has all these uh, different um, categories which it checks. So diagnostics, interactive, um, I'm not 100% sure what that is to be honest with you, debugging and then Java support. And so you can see that for Scala 3.1, everything's covered. Um, for this version of SPT that we're using here is the latest and it hasn't quite caught up. So, uh, so for example, diagnostics, only syntactic errors are reported. And then for debugging, there isn't um, you know, any uh, debugging support yet because it's, it's too new. But just as a, a brief aside, the Metals IDE is uh, still super new. I believe it came out late in 2020. Um, so, you know, there are new things being rolled out all the time for this IDE. Um, so, you know, if it doesn't have a functionality or thing now, it probably will in the future, a uh, very soon future. So, but anyway, for, for what we're doing and 
for our scope, I don't think we need to worry about it too much. But just, you know, if you have or if you have, are having issues, you can come in here and you can see an X in one of these. It could probably be the reason why, and they'll try to tell you how to fix it. Um, okay, so that about does it um, for this. And I'll give you some, some documentation and things to look at later in case you want to um, you know, dive in a little bit deeper. But let's um, go ahead and close this. Um, I'll just go ahead and close the folder. Um, and now I want to show you the next step. Now I want to show you um, how to work with scalation. So um, you go to Dr. Miller's website and you go to the scalation project. So there we go. So um, if you go to his or our course on his website and you go to Scala or scalation, um, and it gives a kind of brief description of what it is. And really it's just a collection of packages that kind of add on to the functionality of Scala, or as far as I can tell. Um, and if you come down here, we're going to be using Scala 3.1, so we can actually download um, Scala on our computer. Um, so I'm going to download, or I have already downloaded this MyScalation 2.0 zip. Um, so I'm just going to exit out of here. And you see we have already have this MyScalation 2.0. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop this in VS Code. Actually, let me show you one thing before I do. Um, so you notice that the, the project structure is really similar to what we created earlier from the template. The only, the only difference is really is this, this lib here. And inside is a scalation jar file. So this is what's actually going to allow us to run and to work with scalation. So if you want to include this, you want to use this in your scalation projects, you need to include this um, as a library in your project folder, um, if that makes sense. So this is kind of what it looks like. And we'll see it again. We drop it in the VS code. <laughs> All right, so it's gonna go ahead and start up SBT for us again. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for it to do its thing here. And as we can see here, you know, it's the same project structure, but we have this um, relation jar file. In there. Um, okay, so it looks like it is done um, building and the server's running. So now let's go ahead and run this and run this code. Oop. Okay, so you have four choices and this is the coolest one I think. So we're gonna try this MyScalation dice test. So we'll select two and it's gonna run that for us. And it's going to pull from the scalation library and it's gonna uh, build us out this graphic here. So, um, you know, really briefly, Kind of what I've gathered of how to work with uh, scalation. Um, I'm sure Dr. Miller will have something to add to this, but um, this is where I'm going to leave you. Um, and I want to show you one more thing. So if you are curious and you need some more documentation, there we go. Um, there are some sources that I used here. One that was very helpful was the actual documentation itself for the Metals IDE. Um, and I'll pause here in a second so you guys can take a snapshot of this so you can you know, look at this on your own time. Um, there's also the scalation docs that I got from uh, Dr. Moore's website were very helpful. Um, and then there's a really great uh, in-depth YouTube demo um, of how to actually set this up and you know, a bit more of the functionality uh, of what the Metal IDE can do. Um, so I'm gonna pause for just a couple seconds and then I'll turn it over to uh, the other guys for um, IntelliJ. So we will be going over package installations or plugin installations. Um, it's a very simple process. Um, so first you would do control alt s and it'll bring up the setting page uh, where you have the you know, option to create different appearances, behaviors, um, editor, plugin, version control, etc. Uh, in our case, we're gonna do plugins and we're gonna install Scala. As you can tell, it's already installed in Fumi. And you can press installed or, and it'll get installed. Once you have Scala installed, you can press OK, and then close it out, and then you can go to create a new project, where you can go to file, new project. And then you can just go out to Scala, and then press idea, and then you can call it anything. We're going to call it Hello World. And since this is our first time creating a Scala project with IntelliJ, you'll need to install a Scala SDK, uh, where you press create. And then select the 
let's see. I'm going to download the highest version and then click download. Um, once that's installed, then you can just press finish. And then, yeah, and then once that's installed, once we have our project created, we're going to go ahead and create a Scala class, go to SRC, renew, Scala class, and we can call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it hello. Once that's created, um, we can go ahead and create our class. That's created and just go ahead and run it. And there you have it. Your first Scala class project. I will be demonstrating the debugger feature of IntelliJ. To start, go and set up breakpoints by clicking over on the left side of the code. So I'm just gonna set one for every single line over here. To start the debugger, go over to the top right and hit debug. You can also do Shift F9. As you can see, it pulls up the debugger, and you have a couple of uh, views you can take. Uh, for example, you have the console, which will show you. Uh, for, if I just hit resume, it will show you uh, the the actual console being printed out. But on the right, you can see that we'll have the actual variables being shown to you uh, with the values. And uh, over on the top, you, where the code is, it'll even show you next to the each individual line what each variable is. So over here it says that x equals zero. It says that x equals zero here because this line hasn't actually run yet. It stops before the line runs when you hit the breakpoint. Uh, so as you can see here, now let's say x equals one and whatnot. Um, another powerful feature of the debugger is the evaluate expression tool. So as you can see, if you go over here, it allows us to do single line expressions, which do not require semicolons, as you can see, uh, and multi-line, which do. Um, so we'll just do some single line. So if you do, let's just say x minus two, we know that x equals zero, we get negative two, as we'd expect. However, if we do x equals x minus two, you'll notice that over here, the value of x within the runtime has actually changed. So you can use this to test out uh, how you can modify variables from within the runtime and it will actually affect the uh, the variable itself in the code it's not just contained in this evaluate expression thing i think it's a powerful tool that i use frequently when I now i'll demonstrate the code with me feature of uh intellij which is also present in other JetBrains ides such as pycharm so over here you can click code with me or do control shift y and hit enable access and copy invitation link i would recommend doing edit files or read only um unless you very much trust them so let's just hit ed enable access um so as you saw it did copy the link to my clipboard so i'm just going to send that to myself and as you can see it's requesting me to accept them into the session so i hit accept it will let them in, and once their side loads, we'll be able to see their cursor where they can make edits simultaneously with us, which is powerful for editing the same file and avoiding having to do constant version control edits and merge conflicts and whatnot. And as you can see, despite my cursor being over here, where I am typing here, there is also a cursor down here where they can make edits.